Greetings all! In the last two videos, we completed a bunch of optional side quest dubers and got some additional pieces of heart, upgrades, and things of that nature. With that out of the way, we're going to continue along at long last with the main quest. In the previous chapter, we actually got a letter from Telma about the resistance group who have been meeting up in her bar. As soon as you enter the bar itself, she'll call you over and say as much, and tell you to go over and make introductions. This is the same group she told us about, about back in Kakariko Village after escorting Prince Rallis. There's actually one person that's not present at the moment, and Telma explains that Aru is out looking into some disturbing things that are happening in the Gerudo Desert, which is actually our next destination. This is important, so head over to the table and introduce yourself if you like. It's totally optional, really. You don't really have to. The first dude on the left in the glasses is named Shad, and he explains that he's more brains than brawn, and that reading books and research is more his cup of tea. He'll help you out later in uncovering the secrets of an ancient civilization, so just keep that in mind for now, as he will come in very important later. Next, armored characters of the female variety introduces herself as Ashi, Ashe, something. She explains she grew up in the mountains with her father, who taught her the arts of war. She goes on to say that she doesn't know much about the words please and thank you, and that you should accept this out front. She goes on to say something mysterious is happening up on Snow Peak, and that when she has figured out more, she'll let you in on the quest. Good to know. She'll come important later as well. The final character will simply stare at you when you first chat with him, but if you're persistent, he'll speak up. He'll say that it's been a long time, and shortly remove his helmet to reveal Gasp! It's Russell! We haven't seen this guy since he was hurt by the shadow beings back near the beginning of the game when we were running around in Ordon Village as a wolf, uh, but now he's out here now. He explains that he met up with the children who are now in Kakariko Village, and how much his son has changed in such a short time. Collins bravely, and how he helped, um, you know, Beth earlier, really inspired him to do everything he can to help the cause. So now he's part of the resistance group, and he'll let you know if he discovers anything that might help. The last character, Aru, is actually in Lake Hylia, as Telma mentioned, and you can find him easily by checking out the map. I actually completely forgot to look at the map, uh, that's like the entire reason we were in there, so just check it out, it's on the table, and it will mark your map and show you where to go next. It's not required um, to look at the map, but uh, that was likely your next course of action. Um, yeah, like I say, I forgot to do that. So it marks the location of the tower in Lake Hylia, so let's head over there now. We're going to leave Telma's bar, speak with Minda, and warp on over to Lake Hylia. Now, I actually already spoke with Aru in the previous chapter because I was in the area, so if you did not do that, then don't worry, it's not a big deal because I actually got it early. So if you were following along with the walkthrough and you got Aru's memo, then great. If you haven't yet, then you're going to have to go do that. That's our next, you know, thing we have to do. So that's the, that's the next thing we have to do before we can move on with the story, so head on over and speak with Aru if you haven't already. So, uh, as you can see, I'm going to use my Hawkeye to kind of zoom in on you know, his location. I'm, I already talked to him, so I'm not going to walk all the way up there. Uh, but you just go in this general direction, straight over here, um, and then start working your way left, going up on top of that platform. So here I'm going to zoom in in a moment. Now there's actually a uh, howling stone up there. If you have not howled to it yet, you should go do that. I'm going to zoom in on it here in a second. Um, you'll see there's a ladder up here. You want to you have to transform into your Hylian form, and then climb up that ladder, then head over here to the left. There's that howling stone. And you continue on to get to the tower, and there's Aru way up there, you can see him just barely, he's all teeny. Um, so go chat with him if you haven't already. So that Howling Stone will um, make the Golden Wolf appear in um, in the Gerudo Desert. So if you have not howled to that stone yet to make that Golden Wolf appear, you should go do that, because we're actually going to go in that direction now, and we'll be able to get that hidden skill. So that is the next one we're going to go grab. You know, Also, if you haven't grabbed any of the other hidden skills, uh, you know, you're missing a couple of them. Uh, there's the shield attack, the back slice, and the helm splitter. If you don't have those three, then you should go grab those. So just check out our like Howling Stone guide on our website, and it will show you how to do that. Anyway, so once you have chatted with um, Aru, he will give you an item called Aru's Memo, which you can use when speaking with fire, and the cannon clown guy near the middle of Lake Hylia. So the first time you use it, then he'll give you the flight for free, uh, but after that you'll have to pay. So Aru once uh, saved Fire's life, so now uh, the cannon man can't refuse any favor that the old coot asks. So I'm going to show him the memo. This will open up a, another traveling option for the cannon to shoot you off towards the desert. Uh, which is conveniently like just above Lake Hylia. It doesn't really make much sense to me. There's such a huge amount of water right here, and it's right next to a desert. Like, the desert is completely barren, there's no water, and then right below it is this ginormous lake with all this humidity. Like, how does that work? <laughs> it's not just an oasis, it's a freaking, like, huge lake. But not just that, but it's like on the other side of the desert itself, there's all the water flowing from Zora's Domain. It's a huge waterfall. I don't know. <laughs> So once you pop up in the Gerudo Desert, this will initiate a little cutscene of Minda, who tells Link a little more about her backstory and such. And there's not really much to say about it, so I'm just going to let you guys watch it. Gen H-Man, do you want to appear? 
So once that movie is finally done, you want to transform into a wolf and head over to the south. If it is night, then you'll see a postal here, so if it is day, you might want to wait until it gets to be night. Um, but there's a postal that is down here in the corner. You can stand on top of these stone platforms here to make the Moldorms unable to attack you. So this will be kind of a sign of safety. You want to stay here. And defeat the post, collect postal number 30. So if you've been following the walkthrough this part, you should have about half of all the postals in the entire game. With that, we're going to work our way all the way to the east, assuming you're playing the Wii version. It'll probably be all the way to the west if you're playing the GameCube version. And you can run around as near highly informed if you want, but the Moldorms will attack you and hurt you quite a bit. So they'll just constantly... they're kind of hard to avoid if you're highly informed. Um, you can attack them and kill them using your claw shot. You can pull them out of the ground and attack them that way. Or you can run around as a wolf and, um, you know, smack them as you can just Z-target them and then jump at them and they'll, like, jump out of the ground and you'll kill them instantaneously. Um, so that works really good as a wolf as well. You just want to keep running towards the east. Uh, you'll see there's a golden bug there off on the left. I'll actually gather that here in a little bit. We'll gather all the golden bugs at once uh, in this area. Up ahead, you'll see there's, if you want to avoid this uh, abyss right here off to the side, there's like a little cliff there. You don't want to fall down there because you have to start the area all over again. And here there's an owl statue. We'll deal with those more in a later chapter, actually. So now Moldorms, these guys that are jumping out of the ground, they're really easily avoided by just running around as a wolf. You can just dash through this area, no problem. Once again, you can stand on top of these stone platforms to not be attacked. Moldorms can be killed by, you know, using your claw shot here. I'm just going to show that real quick. And they actually look very similar to, like, I think they're called Graboids in that movie, uh, those movies <laughs> called Tremors. <laughs> so for any of you who have seen those movies, they might look familiar. Once you're over here, you want to use your claw shot to latch onto this tree here. I think that's supposed to be a piha as part of the tree. I guess they, like, grow up and this is their seeds, I guess. <laughs> Peahats are like plant enemies. They've actually been in a lot of Zelda, Zelda, Zelda titles. Um, and in this one, they are not enemies, though. They're just kind of chilling out, doing their own thing. Um, but, like I say, in past Zelda titles, they've always been enemies. They've been, you'd have to like wait for them to stop moving, or stun them to get them to stop moving with your boomerang or such, and then attack them. So in this game, they're not enemies. They're just kind of floating around. And they're not, I wouldn't say they're friendly as much as they're just doing their own thing. Uh, but anyways, you can use, you'll see them repeatedly throughout this game, we'll be using them to access uh, areas you wouldn't normally be able to reach. So you use your claw shot on them and then you'll be able to latch on and then, you know, fall down to the ground and everything. So pretty cool. Once you get up to the next platform, you'll be attacked by three shadow beings. You want to defeat the one off to the side, of course, and then use a spin attack to defeat the remaining two. You can also attack them in your wolf form or whatnot. This will create a war portal in this area. This is really nice, we'll actually be using this a couple times in this chapter. Um, and it will allow us to not have to go all the way to Lake Hylia and talk to Fire and pay him the cannon and all that kind of stuff and travel all the way over this direction again. So now that we've gotten the Poe on the far left side too of the map, now we don't have to go all the way over there either, so that's really nice, got that out of the way. If you want to climb up onto this platform, you'll see this big stone 
thing, and Minna will give you the option of warping it. If it isn't entirely obvious what it is, this is the Bridge of Elden that Xant warped away before. So now we'll be able to put it back in place, and we'll be able to use that warp portal over in the Bridge of Elden area. This is really nice, it'll come in really handy here uh, fairly soon. So this will put it back in place, and we'll be able to use that. So that is all the time I have for this video. Join me for the next one, and we'll continue working our way through the Gerudo Desert, and working our way towards the next dungeon. So I'll see you guys there.